are these people? We've mentioned we have an extra story, and it's a rant. I haven't done one of these in, I think, over a year. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of what I was known for, those of you who are new. Um, when we first started this channel, one of my segments would be a rant, Colin's rant. So that would be like, I rant or just go off on a topic or an issue pertaining to something political. Sometimes not, but usually it's a political story that I'll just go off on. I haven't done them in a while. Um, I figured since today is Juneteenth, um, and I kind of ranted on Juneteenth before. No. Actually, not really, because last year um, we did read an article that Margaret Kimberly posted uh, regarding Juneteenth. Um, you can find that segment on the channel. We are going to reference it a little bit tonight. That's one of the good things now that we actually have a backlog, backlog. of of clips now we can refer to ourselves now uh, in terms of stuff that we have mentioned or discussed. Um, so we are going to reference that article that Margaret completely wrote a little bit tonight. Um, but we, first, we are going to talk about a little bit about Juneteenth because it is, well, it became a federal holiday in 2021. Um, so it is somewhat relatively new and not everybody will understand um the history behind the holiday i don't want to assume everyone does um so i do want to give a quick ish overview of why juneteenth is um why is it in existence in this country especially now um so we're going to look at a ted talk uh that talks a little bit more about it and then we'll continue on with the rest of the segment so whenever you're ready beef User. One day, while hiding in the kitchen, Charlotte Brooks overheard a life-changing secret. At the age of 17, she'd been separated from her family and taken to William Nealon's Texas plantation. There, she was made to do housework at the violent whims of her enslavers. On that fateful day, she learned that slavery had recently been abolished, but Neelan conspired to keep this a secret from those he enslaved. Hearing this, Brooks stepped out of her hiding spot, proclaimed her freedom, spread the news throughout the plantation, and ran. That night, she returned for her daughter, Tempe, and before Neelan's spiteful bullets could find them, they were gone for good. For more than two centuries, Slavery defined what would become the United States, from its past as the 13 British colonies to its growth as an independent country. Slavery fueled its cotton industry and made it a leading economic power. 10 of the first 12 presidents enslaved people. And when U.S. chattel slavery finally ended, it was a long and uneven process. Enslaved people resisted from the beginning by escaping, breaking tools, staging rebellions, and more. During the American Revolution, Vermont and Massachusetts abolished slavery, while several states took steps towards gradual abolition. In 1808, federal law banned the import of enslaved African people, but it allowed the slave trade to continue domestically. Approximately four million people were enslaved in the U.S. when Abraham Lincoln was elected president in 1860. Lincoln opposed slavery, and though he had no plans to outlaw it, his election caused panic in southern states, which began withdrawing from the Union. They vowed to uphold slavery and formed the Confederacy, triggering the start of the American Civil War. A year into the conflict, Lincoln abolished slavery in Washington, D.C., legally freeing more than 3,000 people. And five months later, he announced the Emancipation Proclamation. It promised freedom to the 3.5 million people enslaved in Confederate states, but it would only be fulfilled if the rebelling states didn't rejoin the Union by January 1st, 1863. And it bore no mention of the roughly 500,000 people in bondage in the border states of Delaware, Maryland, Kentucky, and Missouri that hadn't seceded. When the Confederacy refused to surrender, Union soldiers began announcing emancipation, but many Southern areas remained under Confederate control. 
making it impossible to actually implement abolition throughout the South. The war raged on for two more years, and on January 31st, 1865, Congress passed the 13th Amendment. It promised to end slavery throughout the U.S., except as punishment for a crime. But to go into effect, 27 Hold on states to that. would have We're to ratify talk about that. first. Okay. Meanwhile, the Civil War virtually ended with the surrender of Confederate General Robert E. Lee on April 9, 1865. But although slavery was technically illegal in all Southern states, it still persisted in the last bastions of the Confederacy. There, enslavers like Neelan continued to evade abolition until forced. This was also the case when Union General Gordon Granger marched his troops into Galveston, Texas on June 19th and announced that all enslaved people there were officially free and had been for more than two years. Still, at this point, people remained legally enslaved in the border states. It wasn't until more than five months later, on December 6, 1865, that the 13th Amendment was finally ratified. This formally ended chattel slavery in the U.S. Because official emancipation was a staggered process, people in different places commemorated it on different dates. Those in Galveston, Texas, began celebrating Juneteenth, a combination of June and 19th, on the very first anniversary of General Granger's announcement. Over time, smaller Juneteenth gatherings gave way to large parades, and the tradition eventually became the most widespread of emancipation celebrations. But while chattel slavery had officially ended, racial inequality, oppression, and terror had not. Celebrating emancipation was itself an act of continued resistance. And it wasn't until 2021 that Juneteenth became a federal holiday. Today, Juneteenth holds profound significance as a celebration of the demise of slavery, the righteous pursuit of true freedom for all, and a continued pledge to remember the past and dream the future. People resisted slavery in the U.S. Get as long as it here. persisted. Uncover the story of those who escaped slavery and created a... There we go. Yeah, yeah, we're done. So, we're yeah, done. that's... Yeah, but just to give you... People, I saw a couple of you who said, like Angel said, you don't know anything about Juneteenth. Well, that's why we wanted to do this, is to kind of teach... We don't want to... I didn't want to assume that people knew the significance of Juneteenth, but... So that's why we, I felt it was important to kind of mention it uh, again. We talked about it at length last year, mm -hmm. um, but just kind of give, give a quick overview of the significance of the holiday. And as, as you heard, it was a small, it was a state holiday in certain states, not yeah. everywhere, uh, until 2021 when it became very... <laughs> <laughs> like yeah they it, it, i remember it that day was, yeah. yeah i remember that day actually because um like i remember because that was when we were virtual uh doing virtual school at that right. time uh so um so like i remember my principal at that time basically announcing um yeah, you actually have a day off tomorrow because <laughs> you had like the next day was a federal holiday. I was just kind of like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, give it like a day off of work, but yeah, I, it was kind of weird that it just all of a sudden. Uh, that we had this random day off, uh, it, it became a federal holiday. So, uh, but we're actually going to talk a little bit more about that later. Right. Um, but yeah, so last year when we talked about Juneteenth, um, we read uh, Margaret Kimberly's article on it, uh, and she wrote, I wouldn't say scathing, but she wrote it, it like in a term, in a way that how the holiday now has become somewhat problematic. And she reposted that article uh, again on Twitter um, earlier today. Um, but she added in her tweet, uh, Juneteenth was a people's holiday with deep meaning for the descendants of enslaved people. But 
the declaration of an official federal holiday has turned it into an opportunity for corporate exploiters and cynical politicians to show pretend concern. So we're not going to read the whole article. We have no need to. We read it last year. But I mm. do want to show part of what she was talking about in that article. Um, so this is why I'm kind of glad we have like a treasure trove now of of things that we wanted to uh, talk about because now we can reference ourselves now. Right. Um, a friend to the show, JB, said mm. uh, yesterday, tomorrow is Juneteenth. Here comes the corporations co-opting our liberation to make a profit, and the politicians will do nothing for us to make that liberation tangible for us. Mm. Uh, I think it worked out. We're back. I think we're good. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, let us know. Let us okay. know in the chat. Make sure. I think okay. Indy said we're we're fine. Um, yeah. We're up on other platforms yeah, anyway. Just... So in case YouTube takes us down, you can find us on Rumble, on Twitter, and many other places. And go in that doobly doo below, find in our link tree, and go in there. Um. Okay. Yeah, that was a little weird, but anyway, yeah. so. We're going to look at a little snippet of the article that I read last year uh, regarding to team. Uh, thanks to Margaret Kimberly. Um, oops, no. So let's see what she said or what she wrote about. Yep. Yeah. The Civil War is rarely taught properly. The well-documented struggle for liberation is left out of the story. The enslaved people who fled to Union lines whenever they were forced Lincoln to state that ending slavery was the object of the conflict. He only reluctantly agreed to establish the United States colored troops who were more invested in victory than any group in the country. Of course, he never gave up on his dream of an all white country. Shortly before his assassination, he still expressed a desire to send black people away and to compensate the Confederacy for its lost free labor. Instead of pointing out these well-documented facts, Juneteenth is an amorphous celebration of Black people. The best it can accomplish is to point out that freedom itself is never amorphous in this country. Enslavement was soon followed by lynch law terrorism, the sharecropping system, and the conflict leasing system. Mass black incarceration at the end of the 20th century brought about a new system of free labor, as vicious as that in the Jim Crow South. The general order itself shows the illusionary nature of freedom for black people. It warned the newly free not to collect at military posts and not to be idle. Of course, they were forced to work hard for nothing. An allowance for temporary idleness should have been permitted but this directive is yet another reason for serious discussion and study. Okay. Okay. So, actually, that wasn't all that's I wanted right to thing. play, but that's fine. Uh, okay. that, it, it was, I it cut it off a little short, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, so in of itself, um, as Margaret and JB mentioned it's now become, and you mentioned this uh, yesterday when we were prepping, it's now become a form, another capitalistic holiday to kind of celebrate. Yes. And, you know, often it's become a holiday now where um, kind of like Black History Month, it's become a time when, you know, people people push, you know, Black owned businesses, you know, like Black, black products. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so in a in a way, it, sure. It reminds me of pride pride stuff too now, right? Where it's like yes. every corporation has to have rainbow flags on it, even if that's Raytheon and Boeing, and you know, like it's it's just corporate whitewashing to me, where it's like they mm -hmm. get to appear as like allies, even though they were most likely. Part of the problem, if not the problem, even back then. Right. So, right. You know, like like how how much how much cotton you think the Haynes company used? Oh, you know what I mean? Like, 
at le- <laughs> I don't I don't know when they started, but I'm I'm betting that cotton was picked by some people. So right at some point and really the issue with Juneteenth and this is a part that I didn't clip out properly, but but Margaret basically made the case that this should be the the talk the idea of Juneteenth should lead to discussion in terms of how to make the progression for black people to truly be liberated. Because yeah. again, if you look, if you remember from the Ted, the Ted talk video, uh, when they were freed, essentially the idea was that they were promised four acres and a mule, right? right. This is the idea of where reparations now for black people, well, uh, black descendants of slaves has now come about because they weren't offered that. So they were freed, but free to what? They weren't right. able to basically do anything. They had no capital to justify them, you know, leaving planta- plantations for many of them. So yeah. many of them were, became, became sharecroppers, which is essentially, yeah. or dentured. So basically they were renting land for right. from their former slave owners in the hope that they can own it, and that wasn't always necessarily the case, particularly in the South. Yep. Um, but then, like, um, so JB once again brought up another good point, and that's why I said, remember what I remember a certain part in the video where he he highlighted the Thirteenth Amendment, uh, where it says neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime. So slavery has not been completely abolished. No, at all. Right to jail, so, right away. Um, and you've, and, and I believe you've done a couple of segments where essentially the prison system is essentially mm-hmm. become a form of slavery. Mm-hmm. I think, was that prison in Angola Louisiana that you've talked about? Yeah, yeah. It is still a plantation. Right. Like, they still pick cotton, you know, among many a crop. Like, you know, it is essentially a farm with a prison on it. You know, so shout out my boys in Angola, uh, <laughs> doing the work out there. But like, yeah, I mean, this this is the place where they the the one that always got me was they essentially just left people to die during Katrina. They just mm-hmm. like locked the keys and left. You know, with prisoners inside, which is just fucking wild to me. But, you know, yeah, I mean, 13th Amendment still, you throw them in prison, they can be slaves, pretty much. Right. That's... And even, you know, you're talking about post-Civil World War, like Reconstruction era. Like, yeah. You had, you know, Jim Crow, you had sharecropping, you had redlining, you had segregation. Like, you still had a lot of these systems in place within the country it wasn't necessarily full blown slavery, but it still wasn't true liberation that black people were, you know, essentially were fighting for and still are. Right. Um, so I wanted to play this. I think uh, I was laughing last night. You were probably wondering what I was <laughs> laughing about. Um, this is why. So um, I found this on TikTok. Uh, so Vivek <laughs> Ramaswamy oh. was asked about Juneteenth and I thought he gave a very interesting response like obviously with all the like political baggage uh, kind of what he he says here but he does say something interesting that I've said to you and I think just generally regarding Juneteenth in the past right uh so let's see what he says regarding Juneteenth you think Juneteenth is a useless holiday I basically do do you think uh, Memori- uh, Memorial Day, Veterans Day are useless holidays? I don't, because I have I, have, I stand with the presumption of time-tested traditions. Like, like I said, religion is, you know, I call these things cults. I won't dignify them as religious because religions have withstood the test of time. And so I think that if we made a national commemorative holiday for everything that's important that happened in our history, we'd have no working days left. But I think that the spirit of Juneteenth, we already channel into other holidays like Martin Luther King Day, like President's Day. I think we can commemorate the spirit of that holiday separately. So I think that we shouldn't have redundant holidays 
that celebrate overlapping purposes should have a distinct purpose. And I think, let's be honest, the reason for making that a holiday was under political duress. It was a political hostage situation on the back of the death of George Floyd. And I think that that should not be how we create holidays. We should not create holidays with a cultural gun to our head. And that's what happened with Juneteenth. Well, it's funny that back you mentioned well, well, it's funny about that because you didn't mention what the spirit of you, Juneteenth is. So that would have been nice for you to even mention that. Mention. Maybe, you know, um, you think, you think Juneteenth funny you didn't talk about the idea of slavery or black liberation or any of that. But mm. uh, that being said, he's not wrong. And I've said this before. And so you can go back to that. Yeah. Um, so we have another TikToker. I forgot her name at the moment. Um, Bohemian, Bohemian Diva. 99. 99. Um, very short, but she, I think, nails the idea of this capitalist view of Juneteenth, of why it is. I think she mm. says it perfectly in a short uh, TikTok. So go ahead. You can play what she says. Oh, I can't hear you. Oh. There you go. This is just a friendly reminder that the only reason why Juneteenth is even a federally recognized holiday was used as a tool to gaslit the black community instead of passing a federal police reform bill after the public murder of George Floyd that turned into a viral snuff film. You're welcome. Interesting. Vivek yeah. doesn't mention that when he was talking about right. it. Right. He's like, it was um, a cultural gun to our head. Yeah. And what should yeah. you have done with that cultural gun right. to your head? You know, actually give concessions to black people regarding right. what was tangible happening in George Floyd. Change. Or if you want, or on a macro level, talk about the issues regarding black people that have been an issue, that have long yeah. been an issue in this country, that maybe there could be steps towards actual liberation for black people. But you notice even he wasn't even going to talk about that or mention that. And yeah, you can argue he's a Republican. He's not He's not going to mention that anyway, but no. you, you will think Democrats are not going to mention that. Well, at least the establishment ones are not going to mention that either. Um, so you can say across the board that the idea of Juneteenth, the symbolism of Juneteenth or the purpose of it is essentially lost now in public discourse now. And the kind of why I meant, like we joked earlier, like that I should have the day off, you know, like try having all black people take the day off today yeah, and see what happens. Like never going to happen. No, because the, just you know, given the capital that we would, well, you can argue for everybody, but you can argue the capital that we would bring or lose to the establishment would be huge. So they're not going to give us a day off collectively for Black people to take the day off because I remember shout to Indy mentioned this a couple to me a couple of years ago. He was like, you know what? As a Jewish guy, I could take off or can. For a Jewish holiday. Now, you can argue that if you're in the private sector, you might be able to do that. Now, not everyone has that privilege. But, like, in general, if you need to take off for something, whether it's a, like a religious holiday or a cultural holiday, you generally can. But now it's like people are have off, non black people are have off for Juneteenth over a holiday that. I wouldn't say it's not significant to them, but at the same time, you know, again, people are not going to know the significance of the holiday and especially them to actually kind of think about the implications of why it exists in the first place and what that means potentially for black people. Right. So, you know, like, as I said, there's going to be plenty of black workers at, you know, my local target or like my local Trader Joe's where I was at earlier today. Trader's Joe. Where they were working. Where they were, they were working. So, you know, so I don't think they're necessarily feeling the idea of like, oh, 
I feel free today. I feel like spiritual today. No, I have to work. Right. So, um, so last slide for this. Um, so this was in response to JB's tweet um, at Godless Kami commented, the white man will try to satisfy us with symbolic victories rather than economic equ equity and real justice. Sincerely, Malcolm X. So I think, you know, I think that's a good way to kind of end this segment. Um, you know, but the idea, yeah, the idea that Juneteenth becoming a federal holiday, I do believe is true. It happened a year after uh, the George Floyd protests. And I feel that, was, again, it was a means to kind of appease people to actually feel like, oh, here, like, we actually gave you a crumb. Um, right. You get this day off, some of you. Uh, but no talk regarding uh, justice among the police. No j talk about, like, reparations for Black people. No talk about, like, how, like, racism has subjected us to a lot of cultural and you know, physical issues in this country. Like, there's none of that discussion. It's just the idea of, like, here's a day off for y'all. And even with that, I kind of noticed, like, you would think that Republicans had something to say about it. From mm -hmm. what I remember, there was no pushback against this at all. Not then. So that's just kind of shows... So this kind of shows me that this was... A, like, the overlords basically said, we'll go along with this, and you better go along this to me yeah it's kind of like the same issue that well, was, i remember for like pride I think we, they like, talked about it where it was like it's symbolic gesture needs to happen right now or they're gonna come for us you know right and like so everyone shut the fuck up and signed the check and you know went with and go it. along so, with it yeah it's something similar to pride the moment when gay marriage became legal in this yeah. country you know, like it, it, like granted, like you know, like right wingers still talk about it, but like they're not talking about it in the fervency of it being like of the devil that right. it used to be prior to 2012. So, uh, but the moment that happened, you know, and I think I said this to you, I think within it happened 2012, 2014 was when I went, when, when I graduated grad school. That's when I remember seeing stuff in the stores for pride i never yeah. seen stuff for pride prior to that but then all of a sudden like target was selling stuff like every major corporation stuff was selling 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 stuff for pride um and you see the same thing with juneteenth like the yeah. moment you know it became a federal holiday now you have juneteenth sales now there's this push of you know ice cream and like all this other bullshit but not where there's something tangible for Black people in terms of the liberation that Black people have fought for for centuries here. So, yeah, so that's my rant. Um, and like I said, if you want to read Margaret Kimberly's article in full, it's good. Uh, you can definitely, I think the clip is called The Problem with Juneteenth. Yeah. You can find it on our playlist uh, on the net, on the channel. But otherwise, if you enjoyed this segment, or if you want me to do more rants like this, uh, you can um, scan the QR code or go to that link that you see uh, at the bottom of your screen, or you can type in uh, exclamation point donate. We'll pu pull up a link uh, for you in the chat if you want to donate. Um, and as we keep saying, you know, Please like, share, and subscribe. We are suppressed as hell. Um, please make sure to leave a comment. We do read them, especially now where we can read them and respond to them. And help us get to 2K. We're six people away. Six. Yeah. Six people away to get to 2K. So do it. help us reach that milestone. And yeah, thank you so much. And you can clap for that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, You're welcome.